the soldiers in the army of compassion in ancient times understood that the strength of the army and the effectiveness of the weapons are not enough to win the war and bring about good and lasting change. It's a heart turned back to God, understanding that the battle is the Lord's. Hey, welcome back to the American Campfire Revival, reigniting my favorite thing to do, gathering together with you to pray as the family of faith. I believe there's nothing more powerful and effective that we can do. Well, tonight I want to talk with you about the spirit of 1776 and why we need to learn a lesson from Psalm 17 verse 6 and from the pilgrims who left us this monument. But first, I want to talk with you about our sponsor, Trail Life. Boys and girls are different. Too many boys are getting caught up in cultural gender confusion and wondering, what does it mean to be a boy? Am I a boy? Is masculinity toxic? Is it good to be a man? The Bible makes these answers clear. In Genesis 1:27, God says he created male and female, and he declares that it is good to be a man. My friends at Trail Life understand that boys need men to teach them how to be godly men. And they've developed an intentional program that creates a safe space for a boy to be a boy. Trail Life provides a space for boys to run through the woods, climb trees, battle with sticks, wrestle with friends, play in the mud, and land exhausted in the tall grass. That's what my boys needed growing up. And it was during these moments that we had some of our best conversations and when I passed on meaningful truths to my sons. I believe every community in America needs a trail life experience for boys and for men. I want to encourage you to talk to your church about bringing a trail life troop to your community and help raise the kind of men this country needs. Learn more at www.traillifecampfire.com. I love living in Tennessee. I see American flags everywhere that I drive and I see Tennessee state flags everywhere I drive and, and, the, and the don't tread on me flags flying off the backs of trucks. And <clears throat> I feel that there are many people who have this spirit of 1776 revolutionary war in their heart and they're just, they're, just, they're just ready to go all out and save the nation. And that's always got to be on the table as a last resort. Nobody wants war and revolution. That means blood in the streets. And so my word tonight for those who want to go all 1776 and they're, they're ready to go flying the flags and stocked up, we would do well to take a lesson from the scriptures and turn first to Psalm 17 verse 6, which is the opposite of a call to grab your guns and head for the barracks. And it is a humble plea to God for help. Listen to this. I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love, who also save by your right hand those who take refuge in you. Do you see that? The soldiers in the army of compassion that, that fought for righteousness on the mission to bring heaven to earth in ancient times understood that the strength of the army, the strength of the horse, and the effectiveness of the weapons are not enough to win the war and bring about good and lasting change. It's a heart turned back to God, understanding that the, ba the battle is the Lord's. Our pilgrim forefathers and foremothers understood this, and they left for us their their humble strategy that began with a heart for God and resulted in liberty, blessing, and protection that is made to last for generations if we stick with that plan laid out for us in Psalms 17, verse 6. And this here is a replica of the world's largest solid granite monument called the Monument to the Forefathers or the Pilgrim Monument that is actually sitting in Plymouth, Massachusetts right now. It's 88 feet tall. It is 80 tons of granite. And if you were to go there right now, you would come up to this high 
if you stood in front of it. Right here, this is a six foot tall man. It is enormous and it's on a hill overlooking Plymouth Harbor so that everyone can see it and most people have never heard of it. Have you? Most people in Congress in Washington DC have never heard of it, but it spells out what we need to know. If we're gonna be reformers and not just reporters, repeating the gossip and the hypocrisy that we see around us, we've got to start with turning to God. And here's their secret sauce recipe for a free and just society. They said, first, you must start with this figure at the top of the statue. Her name is written in a rock below her feet and her name is Faith. Notice she's pointing to heaven where God is. She's holding a book in her hand, which is the Bible brought over by the pilgrims on the Mayflower known as the Geneva Bible. She has a star on her forehead representing wisdom. They believed that if you had faith in God and in his word, the Bible, God would give you wisdom to reason from the scriptures to every area of your life and bring heaven to earth, starting in your heart, moving to your home, and then into your culture and producing lasting liberty. That first manifestation is right here in the family. And the first outworking of that internal faith is morality. Morality is, is uh, portrayed by a woman who is holding the Ten Commandments in her left hand and the scroll of Revelation in her right hand, representing both the Old and the New Testaments of the Holy Bible. On her left is the word evangelist and inscribed under her chair is a man preaching the gospel because they didn't believe morality was an external standard of righteousness imposed by a government, by mandates, or by law. That true morality had to start in your heart. And it was only the gospel that had the power to transform your heart so that you loved what God loves and you hate what God hates on the inside. Once you have a transformed heart through the gospel, then you're able to obey with joy the external standard found written in the Word of God. Once you have a morality as your basis for your, for your society, now you can make good laws. And this is the next manifestation. The man of law is sitting in the judge's chair with the book of law in his hand. And notice, the book of law in the judge's hand is directly beneath the book of law in faith's hand indicating that man's laws must always line up under God's laws or they're not good laws. On his right, under his chair, he's flanked by justice. She's holding scales of equity in one hand and a sword in the other, indicating, as Romans 13 tells us, the government does not bear the sword in vain, but it is to be uh, deployed with equity, regardless of your social status, regardless of your race or ethnicity or your economic status. Even the king, even the leaders are to be under the law and justice equally. But then he's balanced on the other side by mercy, justice and mercy, because God is a God who is both just and merciful. They believed Good laws restraining evil now afford you the opportunity to educate your children and pass the baton to the next generation of this faith, of these moral values, and of these good and godly laws that create civility in your society. Here she is, she's a mom, a parent. She's in charge of her children's education, not a state government, not a church official in a robe, but a mother. She's got the book of knowledge in her hand, which is the Bible, a victory wreath around her head. To her right is her child. She's training them up in the way they should go. And on her left is an old man named Wisdom holding a globe and a Bible, indicating he's wise, he's old, and he's got a biblical worldview. They believed that if you train your children and educate them to the third and fourth generation, you would end up with the desired result which is this final figure, liberty. He's dressed in the full armor of God, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the gospel sandals of peace, and the chains on his wrists and ankles are broken, representing that tyranny 
has been destroyed, but they hang there as reminders to him. And he's looking out over the Atlantic Ocean to the source of tyranny, ready to defend everything behind him, ready to defend his faith, to defend his moral values, his ability to make good and godly laws and govern his own nation as a republic of citizens and educate his children in a biblical worldview. To his left is his wife, her name is Peace, and she is prosperous, at peace. She understands who she is and whose she is. She's raising her family and she's prospering with a basket full of gifts to feed her family and to give to those who are in need. How many of you think we need to get back to these principles in the United States of America? We can get back to these things when we decide to not simply repeat error and hypocrisy and get outraged, but lean in, draw down on the promises of God, apply his word and be reformers, just like our forefathers and our foremothers were. I hope you'll join me for the 100 days leading up to the election as we continue to figure out how to apply these things to our families and to our culture. So invite your friends, ask them to join the American Campfire Revival. Send me your comments. Uh, I hope that you'll get a copy of my new book, Born to be Brave, How to be Part of America's Spiritual Comeback. I believe we're on the brink of a great awakening in this country. People are seeing that what we have been given in this woke agenda and Marxist road forward is not progressing us at all. It's regressing us back to the paganism that was destroying the world before the gospel. Will you pray with me? Father, it is so difficult today to discern the truth if we don't have your holy scriptures. With so many people speaking for you, it's difficult for most to discern your voice. We've got pundits in the political arena. We've got ministers of all different worldviews in the pulpits. Lord, we've got doctors and we've got judges. We've got cultural influencers. Lord, we need to hear one voice. We need your voice to cut through the noise and show us how we can make a difference in our generation, uprooting evil and planting seeds of truth, goodness, and love. We ask you to be with us, Lord, and lead us forward. Guide our path. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and uh, hope to see you again in a couple days. To get my new book, click on the link in the description or buy wherever books are sold.